This is how I built a plywood canoe for less than a hundred pounds. Uh, here's how it turned out because I've seen a lot of these videos on YouTube where they don't show you it at the end. I want to see if it floats. I want to see how it goes. Um, so this is a taste of where we're going. I made it out of plywood, just ordinary ply, not marine ply, and some tile batten. You're better looking than me, you could be in my video. Oh, so it's this bit. <laughs> yeah, it's this bit. The only slightly specialised bit of equipment that I've got is a table saw, um, which is just great for cutting thin strips. And so I cut six mil strips off the tile batten and chose the length I wanted and the width and joined the ends together with elastic bands, put a piece across the middle to bow it out and then just let it take its own shape. Um, I flipped it over so that I used the same bow on both sides because I wanted it to be symmetrical and then cut it out with a handsaw. Obviously you've got a nice bit of uh, off cut which you can then use to add on the end because an 8 foot sheet of ply isn't going to make you an 11 foot boat in one go. And then just joined it together with a piece of scrap wood that I had. Um, lots of screws and lots of glue. Then the strips that we use to form the shape get attached to the bottom just along the edge. Again glue and screws just carefully fitted in and it easily takes the shape because that was the shape that it described for us. Plenty of glue. Now I didn't want a lot of screws left in my boat so when the glue's dry the screws come out the hole gets drilled out a little bit bigger and then some glue and in goes a dowel. This was easily the fiddly fiddliest because it's a four meter, a four millimeter um, dowel. So that's the the base. Now it's got two strips on it, so you just add another strip on top. And again, when the glue's dry, take the screws out, um, drill it out. It gets easier now because I'm onto a six millimetre drill. And shop bought fluted dowels from Tool Station, which are I think it was three pound fifty for two hundred. So really cheap and quite easy when they're all dry you cut it off with I've got this flexible saw from screw fix it means you can cut them off flush and make a really nice job so here's adding a third strip so plenty of glue and can you see that they're beginning to step up a tiny little bit because we're using this to form um, an edge that is rounded so there's three strips there now if you've got a load of clamps you can use them but you can use screws and I use this D4 premium wood adhesive which they claim is totally waterproof once it's gone completely dry which they say takes 10 days uh, to chemically change to completely waterproof so having got five layers there now I'm cutting the front and the back and just knocking out the little piece in the center so that a piece of tile button batten will fit in there snugly. Doing the same at the other end. And then I've made up this piece you can just see it's a triangle which are always strong shapes and then I've put a ply gusset on it to make it even stronger and that slips in 
to form the back of the boat. And I just notch the front so it goes over the place where we joined the two bits of ply together. That's the same idea for the front, but this one's angled. It's going to go into a, a pretty reedy river. And if it was square, you'd pick up a lot of weed on the front. It needs to shrug it off. Um, so it's angled forward like this. And the piece extends downwards because we're going to fit the keel into there um, in a minute. Again, plywood gusset, because that just makes it very strong, helps with the rigidity of the whole structure. So this is the longitudinal keel, fin, strake, that goes from end to end. Uh, it makes the boat a lot stronger, but it also means that the boat will track nicely. The trouble with flat-bottomed boats is they just wiggle from side to side when you paddle and waste a lot of your energy. If it's got a keel on it, that helps it run straight and makes it much more efficient. So fix it through with the front, that screw will get taken out and it'll get doweled and then the whole thing gets screwed through from the inside of the boat, that's the bottom. So now we're on to the second sheet of plywood, this is 5.5 millimeter plywood from Juicens, about 15 pounds a sheet um, and I cut it up into 11 inch strips, four of them, and chamfered the ends because they need to fit as they come round the curve against the post. This is where the cat decided to help me. Come on. How are you helping exactly? So now we've fitted one of the sides. Um, you can see that it's that was the chamfered bit at the front there, so that fits bigger area, and then glue and screw onto that edge. That's the inside of how it's looking. And then an eight foot board won't do an 11 foot boat, so you need to do a little overlapping piece. And then this is the, uh, the final board, cut at an angle, that'll do the front on both sides then. Again, chamfered off so that it fits nicely against the front post and uh, it just takes up its own shape as you screw it in. So it's beginning to look a bit like a boat now. Out come all the screws, drill out the holes, in goes the glue, in go the dowels, did that all the way around and then cut them off flush and the same where it joins over. There you go, it's starting to look quite boaty. Now the bit that we cut off to make those strakes angled was a nice thin piece which I then used to cover the vulnerable bottom edge of the plywood, plenty of waterproof glue, I just tacked that on with some nails while the glue dried and uh, if you put the nails in at an angle rather than all straight then they really pin it in nicely. Now I'm just working on another bit of tile batten just shaping it up because there's also a strake down the edges. This is part of the structural strength and it also protects the edge when you drag the boat in and out of the water or it goes over weirs and now just shaping up the front can you see i've put an extra piece on there it's a little kind of sacrificial piece if it gets dented you could just cut it off and add another one and now with a plane shaping those um, edges that we built up into a nice fat curve because that makes the boat much more efficient. That, a square edge there would generate a lot of turbulence, which would be a lot of drag and slow you down a lot as it went through the water. And here's a look at the inside of the boat when it's up on edge. A final bit of... Uh, planing and sanding.
just drilling a hole in the front and uh, that's where the rope's going to fit this is looking at my chair on the patio to see what angle the back should be because I want a backrest in this thing uh, so a little bit of wood either side a bit of ply in the middle a um, piece along the top make it nice and strong and then I put another little triangulating piece it strengthens the back and just adds a lot to the rigidity of the whole boat um, whilst not adding any weight trills running out Ugh. and then a piece at the front also strengthens up the front and then a final bit of sanding that's the back I put another sacrificial piece on and you can see just a couple of cross pieces in there just to strengthen the boat sideways inside now because we're going to do the epoxying um, I've used a variety of epoxies but this one I have found really good um, it works out at 10 pounds a litre and I use two litres um, on the boat it's non-hazardous it's non-toxic it doesn't make a smell but it does need 20 degrees C to go off properly so that's why we're inside you want some brushes that you're going to throw happy to throw away because they don't clean up and I use shot glasses for measuring you need uh, two of that and one of the hardener Alexa set alarm for three minutes Second timer, three minutes, starting now. It mixes easily, it doesn't get a lot of bubbles, it's absolutely clear um, and it's very thin so it really finds its way into all the gaps and crevices and sinks nicely into the wood. Um, I put two coats on the outside and two coats on the inside. it wants about 24 hours between coats. I did find one screw I'd missed, so I dipped it in epoxy and uh, squeezed it in. That should be nice and waterproof. And if you need some filler, just mix in some sawdust. I saved sawdust from um, all the strips that we cut of the tile batten. Mix it up to the consistency, they say, of peanut butter, and then you just trowel it in and it goes very hard, it's very strong. If you want something with a finer finish, you can use flour. It's not quite strong, but it does give you a nice fine finish. You can sand it up and get a really nice shape when it's all dry. So that's the boat after just one coat, but it all got two coats. On the second coat, I put in a few drips of acrylic paint, um, just really so that I could see very easily where I'd been before. It doesn't show up so easily on the video, but I could see where I'd been before. Tilted the boat up so that all the stuff that I put in the front really ran right into the front and sealed any possible weak spots. There it is. So ready for first float. Uh, I'll do a zoom in. Uh, on the top, a oh, I've got it. And then the very next day, I was entered in the Sudbury to the Sea event, a hundred craft traveling 24 miles down the River Stour from Sudbury to the Sea. Uh, you've got me, I'm number five. Thank you. Yeah, no. <laughs> Uh, it's a marvellous event organised by the River Stour Trust. Um, a great social event, it's not a race, it's uh, a fun paddle 24 and a half miles down the river.
In some places the river is pretty narrow. <laughs> it's like discovering a secret river. You see some lovely houses and some great sights. The wildlife is beautiful. I saw swans and moorhens and kingfishers, herons, lots of fish. Very clean river. Um, some of it is more exciting. And some of it is just very tra tranquil um, paddling, picnic on the bank, stop at a pub. Wonderful event. Once you cross under the A12, you're into um, Constable Country. So you've got um, Dedham Lock and Flatford Mill. And that's very beautiful. And then the final stretch through the reeds to Cataway. Here's me arriving at the other end, having traveled 24 and a half miles down the River Stour. What have I learned? I've learned it's perfectly possible for anyone to build a really usable, stable boat with only basic woodworking skills.